it's your open source advocate and I'm back with your next video, your next series in the Fusion PBX drama. So I want to talk today about gateways. Uh, previously, if you haven't seen the other video already, you should go back and watch it. We, we set up our Fusion PBX uh, VoIP system and we set up a couple of users and we set up some extensions so that you can actually call between two computers or two phones or two anything that have those extensions set up. And that's important for you to have set up already. We went through a couple of basic settings and talked about the multi-tenancy. So, so really with the different domains, when you talk about multi-tenancy, so you can go into domains and you can set up multiple do domains. So I could add another domain here with a different name and basically assign users only to that domain context and extensions only to that domain context. And you basically start getting a VoIP system that can have multiple different companies or different whatever you want to call it set up to make calls through that system so you can basically host not just your company but other companies who, who need to have a, a PBX system and really kind of turn this into a really nice uh, multi-tenant type system so it does have multi-tenancy capabilities built in and the way you switch those contexts then is, is click over here and you'll have the different domains. So I can switch over to this domain's context and I can see the information for the, the host uh, IP based domain. I of course set up this one which is what I'm actually wanting to use so then it switches you over. Now these don't change much because these two domains are, are the same but if I add another domain and it had different information then you see that information on the dashboard and of course as a super administrator you're the only person that can switch between those domains this way when you assign an admin or an agent or a user to a specific domain and that's the only domain they have access to then then they can't really switch from from here to those domains so pretty pretty nice setup from that perspective now I know your big question is okay I can make calls from computer to computer or device to device as long as it's connected to some kind of internet connection and it has the extension and all that stuff um, but how do I make a phone call out to an actual phone number or how do I receive a phone call in from an actual phone number? So I want to go through that today and we've got our, our test system that we set up um, and I've been practicing with this and the one thing that I found is um, with my SIP trunk, uh, the company that I use to actually get this gateway set up, if I set this one up it messes up my, my actual normal full-time system and then neither system works. So I'm just going to show you basically where to go and get the settings and what to set up here and then we'll go over to my actual system and we'll make a couple of phone calls so you can see how that functions. Now there's a couple of caveats in there that we'll talk about on the way as well but we'll get into that right after this. I want to say thank you to all of my subscribers and all of my patrons over at Patreon. Seriously you guys make this so worth it for me to do these videos every week. I really truly enjoy it and I just can't say thank you enough. If you're enjoying these videos subscribe. Let YouTube know that I'm doing a good job by subscribing to the channel plus you'll get notified when I have new videos coming out. And finally if you're enjoying what I'm doing give it a like just click on that thumbs up and that way YouTube knows that you like it and they'll pass it along to other people that might enjoy my content as well. I really appreciate it. Thank you again. Let's get started. Okay, so I'm going to talk about today a company that provides outgoing phone service. This is called a SIP trunk. So this is a company that provides that phone number to you or, or for you. And then you set up some stuff inside of your PBX system to connect to them and allow them to connect to you. And then you can send and receive actual phone calls. Now that's not free. Um, I have not found one yet that is free to use like that. But there are lots and lots and lots of them out there, so you need to find one that works well for you. The one I use is, just happens to be one that I, I stumbled upon on the internet. And then as I was looking through some of the Fusion PBX documentation, I found that they actually use them as well. So I, I figure they're pretty good. Um, but this one is called Voicetel. And normally it'll pop up a little box that says, hey, here's your, here's your username and password space. You need to type those in and then click OK and it'll take you onto this page here. And here you can see that it's got HTTPS set up and running. So it does run encrypted. Now there's a few things. So we have this summary of my, of my system and when I started using their services and there's a map of all their stuff around the world and, and things like that. So this is pretty basic uh, overview here. Then we can go to billing. And when you look at billing, you can see, you know, like I need to add funds and they use PayPal, verified PayPal to accept funds, which is pretty easy for me. I've got a PayPal account. You can set up recurring payments if you want. I usually just pay a little bit. 
it's about one penny per minute one US cent per minute of calling and uh, what I use this for is for my personal business and then I also have this forwarded from my work to my PBX system so I can receive calls for my from actual work that I do every day um, they use a, a voice PBX system and I just told them hey here's a number to forward it to I've got an office actual desk phone that I can use I can also use soft phones like I've shown you in another video in the other video um, but but you know it kind of gives me options for receiving phone calls from work um, I can also then use my PBX to forward that to my cell phone if I want to but I don't have to and it doesn't use up my cell phone time and battery and things like that for work calls if I don't want to get work calls on my cell phone which is great so billing uh, pretty straightforward you can see your transaction history and you can see current rates if you want to if you want to know what the current rates are so you can kind of see that stuff too uh, the next one is the dial in number and this is kind of the big part that you need to understand and look at so when you go here you can say you know I, I want to find an actual number and then you can look for an exchange or you can look by area code which in, in the US is, is area code so here if I type in you know I want to go with area code let's just say 505 that's that's the basically almost the whole state of New Mexico uh, but also uh, Albuquerque for sure but we can click search and we can let it start going and it's gonna go and look for whatever phone numbers they have available currently with that area code and once it finishes searching it's gonna give us a listing of available phone numbers and you can see here the different numbers that are available and when you find a phone number that you want so let's just say we wanted this phone number you can click on it it's gonna say like are you sure you want to purchase this phone number and you can say yep I want to do that or no I don't want to do that and and just you know basically confirm that you want that so I'm just gonna say cancel I don't want it right now I've already got phone numbers set up um, but you know it, it tells you hey here they are and then here are the locations you can choose from so that's kinda nice right Los Alamos or I can say you know what I want to go up here to Gallup uh, or maybe I want to come down to Santa Fe or, or you know any of those things and, and I can just pick a place that I want to have a phone number from and it'll actually give me a phone number that I can utilize for receiving and sending calls so depending on where you are you might be able to find a phone number that's actually local to your not only area code but to your city which could be really useful if you're a small business trying to do something in town and you just want to have a nice PBX system so you get your DID you buy that phone number and then finally the nice thing about this is they have this configs section and right here you see fusion pbx and if you expand this you'll see and i'll have to blur out my my my, my information here for my username and password but you get voice tail you get username you get password and then you get you know from from user which is basically the same as your username in this case and then they tell you hey here's what you need to type in in order to get this information so that you have good data flow um, from from Voicetail to your Fusion PBX system and then they give you what you need for outbound rules and what you need for inbound routes or outbound routes and inbound routes so we'll kind of go back to the PBX and we'll look at this and uh, we'll see kind of what that looks like all right so when we come into our PBX system we're gonna come over here and we're going to say alright I need to set up a gateway the gateway is how you get traffic in and out of your PBX system to actual phone numbers and basically Voicetail in my case is the gateway that I want to use so I need to set them up as a gateway so I'm going to come into gateways I'm going to click on add and then right here it starts saying okay what's the gateway so this is just a gateway name so we can just call this Voicetail so we can identify it here it wants to know what the username is so you're going to go over to your Voicetail um, config side and just copy and paste the data so again I need to hide this from you guys but um, I'm going to I'm going to highlight this and I'm going to copy it. I'm just going to go back in and I'm going to paste it in. And then I of course have to blur it here as well, so I'm going to have a lot of editing to do here. But then we're going to do password, same thing. Um, and then we're just going to paste that in. And then from user is the same as the username in this case. So I'm just going to paste that in. And then we have from domain and proxy. Those are the same values in this case. So we can just go ahead and paste that in twice. And then it says register true, enabled true, expire seconds 300, retry seconds 600. So we'll make sure that these are set correctly. Expire is 300. The realm isn't set. Register is true retry says 
600, so we'll set that. Oops, 600, let me type it correctly. And then, of course, we do want this enabled. So here it is right here, and we can give it a description just like that. So the profile external, we're going to leave that as it is, and then we're just going to click on Save. So now we've got all that stuff saved, which is great. Now the next thing we need to do is go set up a couple of routes. So to get to routes, you go to Dial Plan, and you're going to go to Outbound Routes, and we're going to click on Add, and this is what sets it up so we can make outbound calls. So first thing is pick your gateway, which we only have one set up actually, so we're just going to click on Voicetail under our, under our context. We're going to click on Voicetail. For the Dial Plan Expression, we're just going to highlight this. We're going to copy it. We're going to go back in here and we're going to find the dial plan expression string here. We're going to click it and that's fine. And then there's just a couple of other things that we actually need. So there's really not much to this. Um, so the order is 100. You can't set it to 000 like they say from this screen, but we can do it from a different screen. So there it is, 100. We'll just make sure it's as low as possible. Enabled is true and description is voice tell out we'll hit save so now we've got that but we can click on it we can go in here and now we can click on our order and we can actually go way up here to 000 like it says once we've set 000 we're going to click on save we can see that we got those changes saved now we're going to go and set up an inbound route now inbound routes are kind of weird you click on add you're going to put in the name and then you're going to go here to this destination and you're going to click on add and it's really going to fill out the rest of your inbound route for you so you could just start at destinations and and do it that way but we'll kind of do it the way that they say so we're going to say voice tell in I believe is what they told us so we'll go look at our inbound route here uh, voice tell DID is what they want that's fine so we'll say copy and then we'll paste that in and then we're going to go to add for the destination and then we click on add inside destinations and it's going to be an inbound type the country code is not listed as part of their instructions but we do have this destination uh, number so we're going to copy that and then we're going to go back and then it has actions and it says select destination from the drop down list. So what they mean is when the phone call comes in, where do you want this to go? So this could be to your uh, innovated, you know, integrated voice recording menu. It could be to your admin secretary or your administrative secretary's uh, extension. In this case, we'll just send it to Brian here at 101. There's a couple of other little settings here. So they want to set order as 999, enabled equals true, and then description voice tell in. So we'll go do those things real quick. So you can kind of skip down past all of these settings for the most part. Make sure it's got the right context. And then this says 999, which I don't think we can get to 999 from here either. Oops. Oh yeah, we can, right there. 999, enabled equals true. And then this is just voice tell in for the name. We'll click on save. So now we've got our inbound rules. You can see that here. And we've got our destinations. You can see that here. And we've got our gateway set up. And right here you can see where it says regged. So if it's not saying regged, if it's saying unregistered or not registered or anything like that, then there's a problem. You need to go check your settings, make sure everything's set up correctly. And you should see this that says regged right here. So once you see regged, uh, everything should be pretty much set up for us to go make some phone calls. So I'm going to switch over because right now this is just going to interfere with my other PBX system, I'm pretty certain. Okay, so I've come into my normal PBX here and I've started back up the actual Voicetail connection and you can see here it says Reg, just like I told you before. Now I've got my soft phone set up to go to my normal PBX and you can see that I've got my registration has succeeded. And I'm going to call into my actual system here and you can see that it pops up and it says there's a wireless caller calling and I can actually answer the call and again I'm getting phone calls now and I'm calling in from my cell phone 
and you guys are able to see that the call comes through. So this is all going through my PBX system. So I'm getting all the calls through my PBX system. So it just takes a little bit of setup and a little bit of time and sometimes a little bit of frustration, but it does happen. Now I want to cover a couple of caveats. I'm going to hang up that call and I'm going to get the, the, the phone into the background. And we'll go back into our test system over here. I had to take out the gateway and everything so I didn't have that conflict that, that you see. But Voicetail, as far as I know, tries to send you the information to your SIP trunk um, to your gateway on port 5080, 5080. This is important because if, if you have a provider who does not send that information or does not communicate with your system on port 5080, you one might have to go open ports on your firewall. You may have to open up the ports that they specify on your firewall to allow that traffic through. You may have to go into your advanced settings and set up some rules for access control as well. And you may have to add that provider's uh, domain name and IP address for access controls, basically to allow that traffic to come into your to your PBX as well. So be aware of that. Um, when you do that, you need to you may you may need to go add a secondary um, system to allow that traffic to go through. And then so so I wouldn't say I'd say don't add anything here, don't mess with this unless you have been explicitly told you need to do this <laughs> in order to allow traffic through. Um, but if you see that your provider doesn't doesn't communicate on 5080, that may be something you have to do. So be aware of those things because it can create problems um, if they don't communicate on that standard port, and it, and it does happen. And in this case, as far as I know, Voicetel does communicate on that standard port, um, and, and I haven't had to set up anything special uh, on my system for access controls either for my, for my personal PBX system, um, as you can see. So I would say just kind of cautiously move forward with those kind of settings depending on what your provider tells you if you're not using Voicetel, if you're using somebody else, Twilio. Um, again, there's hundreds of them out there that provide these services, so find the one that works best for you. Uh, I, I initially said in my first video you might need a bigger system to run hundreds and hundreds of calls at once. Uh, there's a video out there that I found that the guy said, let's just find out what we can do with a Raspberry Pi 3B, and he made like a couple of hundred calls at a single time with a Raspberry Pi 3B, so if that gives you an idea of what you can actually do with these things when you know what you're doing to set them up. Um, now that was using Asterisk, I believe. I don't think it was using FreeSwitch, but he, he really got that thing going. And these are really just amazing systems, and audio these days when it's compressed doesn't take up any bandwidth, so it's pretty awesome. I hope you get a lot out of this. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, like, subscribe, tell your friends about it so they can come along the journey with us, and I'll talk to you next time. Yeah.